the country is graduating itself for making components to equipment, to subsystems, to systems, to complex systems. And the defense uh, needs very, very complex systems with very simple components. <laughs> so we need to know how we can put together hundreds of industries, thousands of engineers working together seamlessly and coming out with a product that he has highest reliability at a cost which you can afford. I thought that was my experience of developing uh, the Tejas fighter. When we started this program, India was importing everything, A to Z. The confidence level was less than 1%. I'm happy to tell, it took us a few decades, but today we have reached a stage which is a, a fighter aircraft of the best in the world and at a cost which is a fraction of what you will buy from abroad, from anywhere in the world. And with the development done, when the US put sanctions on us, Russians have refused to work with us, and the UK and all never said no, but never said yes. I'm happy to tell you, it has come because of seamless integration between academia, R&D, small industry, and bigger industry. I think this is the ecosystem that is absolutely necessary to develop a complex weapon platform for the world, for India and for the world. And from a stage where People had zero faith. And today I'm happy to tell you the Tejas program led to next generation fighter, fifth generation fighter, sixth generation fighter. All because today the customer has total confidence that the Indian ecosystem is capable of developing such systems. I think that is what the ecosystem that has been developed, and that is what is the outcome today we have. Okay? From a hundred percent import, I do believe in the next 20 years will become 100% indigenous and I have zero doubt with the right kind of approach which our government is today having, we will be able to export in next maybe three to five years. In, in our case, if we had taken 15 years to develop, it took another 15 years to <laughs> prove and technology. That is the case. So we must have what you call focus and perseverance. I want to show what are the characteristics of a complex system industry like aviation. It needs highly qualified manpower, multidisciplinary technologies, huge amount of investments, large, long maturation time, relatively low scale production. If you are making an automobile, you will make in millions, at least a lakhs. But here, if you are made a thousand aircraft, you think it is a big thing. <laughs> okay. Always it will be, if you have done 200, you think great. Uh -huh. So that is the kind of level. Global basic clients, small number of OEMs, not many. Even in the USA today, there are only two people who are doing that. In the whole of Europe together, you have got one fellow there doing that. Innovation is essential for computer survival. Technology development, investments, innovation, they go in a circle. And uh, what it means is you first try a basic technology research, then a research to prove feasibility, then technology development, technology demonstration, system, subsystem development, then system test and operation. You spend about say $100,000 uh, equivalent in a basic technology. You need a million to develop to prove feasibility and you need focus technology demonstration for 10 million and it goes on. We do invest say in uh, Fundamental knowledge, technology development and all at university, research centers and uh, industrial research. And then we go into demonstrations, production development, certification, production operation and all. Certification is an extremely complex game. It takes a long, long time. Okay? And that is, you'll see last of the, most of the projects get stuck in the demonstration sector. Because the defense has a way of asking you to test, test, test until you disappear. Okay? <laughs> you have to have patience, you have money. I've seen a lot of startups. I am myself a, a founder member of one startup. Okay? Finally, you come 
यू आर स्टिल टेस्टिंग पैसा खत्म हो गया सो यू हैव टू सी हाउ टू हैंडल दैट ओके एंड वी हैव टू सी हाउ टू मूव फॉरवर्ड सो दैट इज वॉट यू कॉल द वैली ऑफ डेथ इफ यू कैन ओवर कम द वैली ऑफ डेथ दैन यू आर इन बिजनेस बट दैट्स नॉट एन ईजी जॉब टू डू I just want to give you one example. Eurofighter Typhoon is a well-known aircraft. Uh, something like four countries have worked together, developed. It. You look at that. And the Jaguar, they first tried a fly-by-wire system, and they took seven years to do the testing. They took about hundred flights. Then they went to an experimental aircraft program. From a known aircraft, they made an experimental aircraft program, and that went up to another eight years. Okay, and then they went to Eurofighter program. and you can imagine from 1977 only by about 2008 they were ready to offer even then there were versions version 1 version 2 version 3 version 4. by the time you have integrated one missile time for next missile when you have done second missile then you have new ew system when you have done that there is a new era we call it as foc 1 2 3 4 until you disappear a complex system development needs money these people and thousands of people hundreds of industries and at least 50 60 academic institution working together the key is how do we create an ecosystem where learn to work so in the case of tejas this is one program where vilification gone to the limit until we did first flight everybody said it cannot be flown okay After first flight, also it took years for us to convince our major industry partner this is a viable program. But once we did that, okay, the customer, that is Indian Air Force, become part of us. And today we are moving forward because now the industry is taking the benefit and all that. And today you are seeing from man to unman, the air power is a key thing. Big and military operation outcome the war. World over, by all militants think that a war is not winnable unless one has air supply. Whether you are over the sea, or the land, or anywhere, but the air supply is the key. That is absolutely right. Without that, you can't win a war. There are after Second World War, there are five generations of fighters. Now, the sixth generation is unmanned. So, first generation is a subsonic aircraft. The second generation is a supersonic, but very elementary radar, elementary missile. and that is the kind of system we have the third generation is analog primarily analog fly by wire system with better radars better missiles better and fourth generation is more like a digital okay when we started the lca it is the fourth generation fighter our experience is first generation okay we have to jump to fourth generation it is a portally digital aircraft in fact Uh, if the previous aircraft like Jaguar, which Indian Air Force was operating, it had about ten thousand lines of code, and this aircraft today has ten million lines of code. Okay, you can imagine the kind of digitization that has been done here. The fifth generation is stealth. Sixth is stealth, unmanned, and manned and manned combinations. So then the LCA program came. I think uh, fortuitous, the customer, the industry. the rnd and the government came together and said it is high time we have to develop our own aircraft it took a long time to come to that question and much longer time to build this aircraft so 1961 a first generation aircraft called hf24 was done under the leadership of a german team sitting in bangalore in hr so <laughs> it took 40 years we developed the what to call the light combat aircraft all new technology Okay. The only thing common is the word fighter. We also not only built an aircraft, build the technology that are required and the ecosystem that is required. In the one major area, we have not yet come to a level is the engine. This aircraft, which was a metal aircraft, will become full of computers. Okay. You only ten percent of the aircraft surface is what can matter. Rest are all come. And all this technology was developed here in the country. And I think I at Bombay played a very key role. in developing that okay. and uh, the flight control system one of the biggest bugbears okay in fact this is the system where the even when the us government agreed that we can work with the us company they refused to give any clearance for making a control loss they said it is the crown okay so thanks to them we developed the technology then they put in uh, what you call sanctions and as in 1998 because we exploded an atom bomb 
then uh, it is good for us because in the process we developed all the technologies that are required right from servo actuators everything whole lot of them has been developed the whole lot of these technologies are in demand and the whole system is as i said digitally controlled and i'm happy to say most of these things are in business including the displays and all that all the components have been developed by small and medium each took time i'm not telling you i don't want to give you take che mein ne ho jayega nahi hoga okay time lagega lekin hoga okay interestingly most of the critical things came from small and medium scale none came from a big industry okay the innovation in the, today we are talking startup the startup thinking was in small and medium scale they are ready to take the risk if there is somebody to hold their hands they will do for air conditioning system we had a pipeline from engine to the aircraft which is operating with the pipe uh, the air is about 800 degrees centigrade you have to use pneumonic vertical pipe this nobody could do that just none our chief friends everybody finally there is one fellow somewhere about 5 km away from iit bombay there is one fellow okay if you go to his office you don't know what he is doing but he told me i will make it but i will not show you how i am going to make it afterwards you can test it i must tell you he did it perfect five years of experimentation within a chair we couldn't do it but this fellow did it in six months so the amount of talent that is available is only our limit of ability to explore find out and then support them okay all these companies up to 90% they will do the last 10% the project team must support so hydraulic systems i just want to show secondary power all the systems were developed within the country the brake management system wheel steering system all of them they are all digital system the brakes are all carbon brakes they were all developed within the country and i want to mention to you sometimes we underestimate the effort involved in test facilities extraordinary effort sometimes i feel testing what you call designing a test facility and proving that it doing its job is as complex sometimes more complex than the onboard system we have a what you call an iron bird where the complete flight court system is tested and a complete brake management system that is a years of effort because it's not only you build it you have to prove to the certification people that it is doing its job it is reliable and it can deliver what you are intended so don't underestimate the importance okay today the simulation we can do lot more work but at the end of the day you have to put on a test facility simulation is a key 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 i think lot lot can be done on simulation and that is where our strength is there and we must do that in all aircraft we have structure the aerodynamics they interact but in a flyby air system like our structure controls and or the aerodynamics they all interact we didn't have a software which we could use for design itself and none in the world was willing to give us okay you can know for the way the valid reasons i must tell that uh, uh, professor sudnarayana he came for one year to our ada where the design was going on he integrated a complete team of aerodynamics uh, what the structural engineer control engineers from national aerospace laboratory from ada from hal from ad all of them together and when he left at the end of the year the complete software is ready and last 25 years the software is still being used and the developing a control lab would be this is an unstable aircraft if the control if the computer fails for 200 milliseconds you are out of control maximum you can work is for 200 milliseconds but beyond that it will go out of control so the controls are very very critical not only that the pilot must feel that he is able to is interfacing with their cuff in a in a in a phase in a way both become a single entity a good fighter is the pilot and the vehicle must be a single entity and i think the greatness of this particular aircraft is it became a single entity and that is where the beauty comes so long back uh, before the us put sanctions we want to test our controller on a flying test bed we call a flying test bed there was a company in usa they agreed to do that they modified a f16 aircraft to test our controllers okay 
and we have done the testing and all our pilots flew the pentagon pilots flew everybody then i went there to for the final review the pentagon pilot said the f16 flies better with the lca control <laughs> so with that i can tell you the whole confidence level increased the orders of magnitude even today in respect to who flew this aircraft this is an extraordinarily beautiful aircraft to fly it varied right from israeli president down to everybody else who had flown this aircraft interestingly the first president of israel was a fighter pilot and he was stationed in bangalore during second world war <laughs> his great desire was to come and see the light combat aircraft <laughs> so when he came on official visit he came there i was there at that time then he will see the whole aircraft and then he told he told his iai uh, israeli aircraft industries why can't you build an aircraft like this you have built a huge bloody aircraft <laughs> i felt very good so lot of simulation lot of thing that's what telling the iron bird interestingly when you make aircraft out of composites it is very bad it's not a bad it is, uh, the conductivity is very poor if there is a lightning you will have problem so you need a facility where you can test for lightning with a system working and say it is safe this is not a easy job by the way the whole facility was built by one faculty from indian institute of science this is the facility so very interesting whole wing has to be tested then we have a gearbox which connects the engine with the aircraft is a single there no redundancy here so you have to design it test it validate it and make it work the amount of testing that was to done it was extraordinary i just want to show you a few things you can see the kind of test facility itself i think i at madras had worked very closely with cvrd friends and what came out is an extraordinary thing long back when we were doing work for the air force uh, i think admiral ramdas was the okay he was the chief then he told me what are why don't you build for navy okay i said sir we will be happy if you can support us so he did navy has supported us then uh, he said you must get the feel of a aircraft carrier okay so he one day told me that uh, abram lincoln one of the aircraft carriers of usa was visiting bombay okay so he told i make an arrangement you go and spend one full day there see how fighter aircraft are operated in the aircraft carrier it was a very valuable thing okay and in that aircraft carrier you launch with a catapult and land uh, with a hook that is what it is that so in the launch you we were to go it is a 15 seater passenger aircraft <laughs> that is also launched there but what i am why i am mentioning this is very very supportive trying to make us understand what it means developing a, a fighter for a carrier it is far more complex than that of a fighter for a land aircraft okay it's far more complex it took us time but today we built an aircraft which can take off and land from vikramaditya but today f35 is a single engine fighter reason is today i have what you call an integrated vehicle health management system this technology helps you to do in advance you can prognose when a component will fail you have the technology then i don't need two engines with one engine i can know and i can get the reliability level that a twin engine fighter was giving for well, last say 100 years okay that is the benefit there is a technology called leading edge vortex controller first in the world and it had proved it's a beautiful event when we flew this on a mic 20 aircraft we also didn't know that we are the first in the world because in zamane mein itna news nahi hai <laughs> then after 6 years the nasa has flew the same concept after 6 years not next year so sometimes you are done first time in the world without knowing you are the first the technology is really there so a lot of new technologies have been there lots and lots of and the reliability level for last 23 years it was only recently maybe about 3 weeks back one aircraft crashed with an engine failure because the pilot clearly said there is nothing wrong with the aircraft and all that means the amount of reliability that has been built in is extremely good the design team and the customer indian air force they came together now they work together they believe in each other so now they have given the sanction just about a year back for a mark 2 which is though they call it a mark 2 is a new aircraft <laughs> for various reason they call it and this aircraft having the something will double the weapon load more range more other thing and this i hope by 2026 it will fly that's what the plan is so it as i said it has got new systems 
new weapons, lots of new weapon capability. It's quite a beautiful aircraft. It has a canard control, uh, configuration. Then a fifth generation point, uh, this is a stealth point. That also has been approved. Recently, the government of India has given a credit for develop, design development of a fifth generation point. So LCA Mark 1, Mark 1A, Mark 2, and AMCO, all of them have been approved today. And it is the LCA Mark 1, Mark 20 are now entering, entered into service, entering Mark 2 is in an advanced stage of development. What you call AMCA has just been cleared, and I'm sure I don't see any reason why with the ecosystem that we have built, we will not be able to do that. It is an extremely good fighter. Okay. So this is what, what I say: the LCA Tejas ecosystem, given the confidence to the customer, given the confidence to the government, whereby a series of aircraft that followed that has now been approved and each one developmental cost is much more than that. And the first one is about say about a five, six thousand crore, the next one is about ten thousand crore, the third one is about six, fifteen, the, the fourth one is about twenty thousand crore. That is the kind of money. But point is the Air Force is supporting us, the government is supporting, okay? And the whole ecosystem is what is important for such a thing. The fifth generation, lot of new technologies, the new generation radar, new type of uh, what intakes, new materials, new system. The aerodynamics is different here, totally different. LCA Mark 1 was designed to replace mid 22 aircraft, which were being uh, manufactured at HL Nasik, not too far from here. And the design for MiG-21, but today it is replacing MiG-21, MiG-23, MiG-27. The Mark II will replace Jaguar, Mirage 2000, MiG-21. Three aircraft will replace that. And the fifth gen, AMCA, will replace Su-30, Rafale. Okay. I hope in next 20 years, Indian airport from being a 100% import become 100% indigenous. And within this time, I'm looking forward to this becoming what you call a 100% export kind of thing. So this is what I am looking forward to. I have written Mark 1 in 4 squadrons, but now the order is for 9 squadrons. 220 aircraft. This is the thing. This is the 6th generation. This is the very, very interesting. Where manned and unmanned work together. A costly manned fighter at a low cost unmanned one. They have to work together. Interestingly, a scale model of this aircraft about a year back has flown. And it's uh, now a tailless aircraft has flown in the month of December, January. It's a beautiful technology. Lot more work has to be done. So this is the one. Lot of new systems, new thing and all. Lot of learning from LCA. That's what it is. Now, I want to show this to you. <laughs> this is an important thing. Realistic goals. Follow the plan. Minimize the risk. Standardize. Central decision making. Expand authority. The exponential thing is set ambitious goals, follow the vision, maximize learning, personalize, empower decision making, expand influence. Don't expand authority, but expand influence. The LCA project at ADA, we have no manufacturing facility, nothing. Okay? Our only plan was how to expand our influence. Today, if I talk to my colleagues in IIT Bombay, can you take up this work? They'll take up. But that is what is the kind of understanding. So also, but another 40 R&D library. Even before a project is given, 50 work they will do using their own thing, which is a very important thing. And I feel for a ecosystem to become really what it should be, is this kind of exponential thinking is the key thing. I'm happy to tell you, we have followed this approach. Because within Ida we have very little facility and all, and that is what happens. Okay, and I'm looking forward to this approach will lead to um, sorry, um, okay. this is what we need to do. Because even as IIT, you only can what you call influence people. You can't command them, and that is the kind of technology thinking we need to have. And then this is what are risk levels are high. If you want zero risk, you can't. my request to my friend from Navy is. Don't follow zero risk approach. Be ready to fail. You are, you don't have zero risk. So also in development. How can you have a zero risk in development and all the risk in war? It's not possible. So you have to have that kind of a thing. And that is what is required. What is required? Not only technological innovation, organizational innovation is required. This is very, very important. You need flexible management structure. 
and virtual corporation concept, network work center, link industry with the laboratories and academia, national tune to realize complexity. Be very clear, there are some problems cannot be done either by academia, nor by industry, nor by lab. You have to form together. So we have formed what you call three national what you call center. One is for control of them. Second is to make a composite wing. We found the single cannot do that, okay? And the third one we want to do, we have like that, we went ahead and formed national teams. And in that national team, the academia, R&D industry have worked together. And I'm happy to tell you that all these programs of national teams came wonderful. We have worked for two decades as a team between R&D, academia and industry. If there is a vision and there is a will, we will succeed. I think that is what is important for us to do that. So, I just want to show this map. This is the, almost everybody, including a small like uh, PhD College of Engineers, they have been part of this program. And it has helped us in a big way to do the job. I, I just want to show this one. Mm -hmm. Knowledge creation comes from design teams, R&D labs and academia. Well, we had 25 active academic members. Then we have what you call system labs, where knowledge intensification is done. Then you do what you call certification, where all that has to be tested and proven. Then it goes to products. You have to have all these four arms. These four arms are important for putting our system into them. Okay? If we may think I'm the greatest fellow on earth. You are great. But by yourself, okay, you can't do. You have to, you have to learn to work together and learn to tolerate each other's strengths and weaknesses. Okay, this is very important and I think this is the ecosystem which we were able to develop. And because of this ecosystem, today the customer is continuing to support us. Because this ecosystem is an enduring ecosystem. This is what I call as the LCA knowledge circuit. And what is defined? I, I still feel in this country, unless a major program is there, the system doesn't get uh, You must have a major program. And LCA was a major program. When it was uh, approved, it was the largest program in the country, R&D program. So you have a mission, you have ideas, you develop skills, you develop technology, you de above all, you develop a culture, culture of working together, culture of development, culture of taking risk, culture of not be afraid of failures. Because if you are afraid of failures, you will never succeed. Failure is the route to success. The only point is you fail fast. In a big industry, if they take one year to fail, you fail in one month. So that you have 12 times more chance to experiment, 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 and then succeed. Okay? The first thing um, you have to teach your students and your partners, everybody is, failure is part of life. But only thing is learn to fail fast. So, so that enough time is there for to complete the experimentation and succeed. I think that is what is important for us to Finally, it is love for what you do. It is the passion. It is what drives you to go against any kind of roadblock as difficult. You don't care about incentives of the company and the tools they give you and the KPIs to measure, KPIs to measure you because you are driven by the passion to do the right thing and change the world. Okay. <laughs> I have told all the story, but this is the final <laughs> So, thank you. Thank you very much. Sir.